our second video on water and its properties. We're going to carry on from where we left off, so let's go. Now, another one of uh, water's um, special properties, which is linked to its ability to form hydrogen bonds, is this uh, ability of cohesion. So, cohesion is basically the attraction between particles of the same substance. So, water is basically attracted to itself and this results in something known as surface tension which is a measure of the strength of a water surface. Uh, it produces a surface film on the water and that allows insects and other small organisms to actually walk on the surface of the water. As it states here as well, cohesion also forms water droplets um, on the surface um, of the leaves as well. Now, adhesion is the attraction between two different substances. So, water will actually make those hydrogen bonds with other surfaces as well, such as glass, soil, uh, plant tissue, and, and cotton. And it allows um, a capillary action as well, so it also leads to um, transpiration. So, where water is taken in by the roots, and through this process of transpiration, water actually moves up the xylem against um, gravity. Okay, water also has some very um, important thermal properties as well. One of those being that it has a high specific heat capacity. Now, this basically means that it takes a lot of energy for the temperature of water to change. This means that the temperature uh, remains relatively stable. Uh, which is useful for the organisms because a lot of organisms are adapted for only a narrow range of results. So this slow heating and slow cooling of water is ideal for many organisms because there's less risk of there being massive fluctuations in temperature. Now because it takes a lot of energy to make water evaporate, in other words it's got to actually break all of those hydrogen bonds before it can evaporate, um, it's a good coolant. So evaporating water actually removes lots of heat energy from an organism as well. And that's the other um, property that water has. It's got a high heat of vaporization, otherwise, or sometimes known as a high heat of evaporation as well. Okay, so the other uh, thermal property of water is this high heat of vaporization. So once again, high temperatures can obviously damage tissues and denature proteins, uh, which obviously causes enzymes to stop working. Now, it takes a lot of energy to actually change the temperature of water, and that's because the amount of heat needed to raise, say, um, one gram of water is about one degree Celsius. Now, water's heat of vaporization is about 540 calories per gram, which means that in order for water to evaporate, each gram of water needs to gain 540 calories. Otherwise, the temperature doesn't actually change. So as water evaporates, it actually removes a lot of heat with it, which gives it a cooling effect. So animals who live in warm countries, what they can do is use water or mud to cool off during a hot day. And when we, for example, as humans, when we sweat, it gives us a cooling sensation because the excess heat energy is removed by the body through this latent heat of evaporation. Now water also has some amphoteric properties as well, in fact, it can act as both as an acid and as a base. But before that, we need to look at the dissociation of a water molecule. So here you've got two water molecules, and you can see that one hydrogen atom has actually left its electron behind and travelled as a hydrogen, was well, a single proton actually, or a hydrogen ion, and joined up with this water molecule, forming hydronium or a hydronium ion. What you're left behind with is a hydroxide ion. 
Now what actually happens is in pure water, only one water molecule in out of, well, only one molecule in 554 million is dissociated. And this is simplified into this reaction here. So you can obviously see this arrow means that it's reversible. Now because only one water molecule in every 555 million is dissociated, if we add an acid into uh, water, an acid is just a substance that increases the hydrogen ion content. So it just increases the number of hydrogen ions that can become dissociated. And any substance that reduces the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution is known as a base. So strong acids and bases completely dissociate in water, while weak acids and bases dissociate only partially or reversibly. Now the fact that water um, acts as a buffer means that it eliminates any large or sudden changes in pH. So buffers actually help organisms maintain uh, the pH of body fluids within a small narrow range necessary for life. So buffers uh, usually are a combination of hydrogen ion acceptors and they work by accepting hydrogen ions from solutions where they're in excess and also by donating those hydrogen ion, ions when they have been depleted. So here we've got an overview of some of the key properties um, of water. Now, you might have noticed that we haven't actually looked at the fact that it's uh, immiscible with hydrophobic molecules because that is actually covered within unit two. Okay, so that concludes this short presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to keep a lookout for some more videos coming up soon.